All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. As you already know, my name is John Urschel. I'm the author of Mind and Matter. Oh, those are, what are, okay, not concerned. Those aren't my slides. Uh, I'm a former NFL player, retired offensive lineman for the Baltimore Ravens, and also, I like it, and also a mathematician. While I was playing for the Ravens, I began to work on my PhD at MIT, and now I'm very close to finishing it. My hope is soon I'll be a math professor. The NFL, thank you. The NFL and MIT might sound very different, like two completely different paths. But in my life and in my path, this is the only thing I've known. A lot of people think you have to be one thing or another. They think in terms of binaries, right or wrong, black or white, football player or mathematician. I don't blame them. It can be very, very hard to imagine a different life than the ones you see around you, or the life that people picture for you, or even the life that you grew up assuming you would live. To be perfectly honest with you, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be a mathematician. I grew up dreaming to be a football player. My freshman year at Penn State helped change that. That was when I realized my true path. First, though, I feel like I should say that the first ambition of becoming a football player, this wasn't assured. When I got to Penn State, I was a two-star recruit. I didn't receive a football offer until mid-January of my senior year, two weeks before signing day. Penn State signed 27 players that year, and I was the 26th. I was the seventh offensive lineman they signed and the first one to play. In high school, big time college coaches, they weren't knocking down my door. Penn State offered me the scholarship at the last minute and I decided that I was going to make the most of it. When I got to Penn State, I realized I'd have to work that much harder than everyone else. I was about 50 pounds lighter than most big time college football offensive linemen. I was a good athlete, but not an elite one. I had poor, outdated technique. The truth was, I was going to have to be tougher and more resilient. So that's what I set out to do. I dedicated myself, pulling myself out of bed before dawn to go lift weights, to go train, to study tape and not listening to a single person who told me that I was too small, or I hadn't gone up against the right type of competition in high school, or that I didn't have what it takes. I knew that it was within my own power to at least try to reach my goal. I figured I had five years to play football and the rest of my life to figure out the rest. But at the same time, it's not quite fair to say that my interest in mathematics came out of nowhere. When I was a child, my mother noticed that I liked math. I liked games, I liked puzzles. She would buy me math workbooks and I would devour them. And I would spend hours doing math and logic puzzles with my mother at the kitchen table. My mom had decided, like a lot of moms do, that her child was a genius and <laughs> Naturally, as the greatest genius the world had ever seen, I needed to become a rocket scientist. And I didn't think much of it, and so I started out majoring in aerospace engineering. As soon as I took my first engineering class, though, I started to realize that it wasn't quite for me. We were learning interesting things, like how things were built, memorizing formulas that described things like forces and kinematics. We were learning how things worked, but I wasn't so interested in how. I wanted to know why. I didn't want to memorize formulas. I wanted to create them. I realized later that I was lucky 
It took a lot of work to become a big time college and professional football player. But it also took the support of other people. I know I wouldn't be the mathematician I am today if it wasn't for my mother. She herself was a talented math student growing up, but she didn't have a lot of opportunities. She grew up in inner city Cincinnati and attended a school with a high dropout rate and a high teen pregnancy rate. Even though she was top of her class, her guidance counselor told her she shouldn't go to college, but she should be a secretary. It took a lot of courage for her to not listen to him. She applied to the University of Cincinnati and got a full scholarship. And there, she wanted to pursue a STEM career, maybe medicine or engineering. But when other people looked at her, they didn't see a doctor or a physicist. They saw a young woman from the wrong part of town. And so she started to doubt herself too. She felt like she wasn't prepared enough and started to wonder if she was even smart enough and she needed a job. So she worked as a nurse while putting herself through graduate school. She and my father separated when I was three and she knew all too well how difficult life could be for a single parent. But here's the amazing thing. She made sure that I, her son, never felt that way. She made sure that my hopes and my dreams never felt out of reach. When I was a kid, she would always tell me that she wanted to make sure that whatever I wanted to do, whatever I wanted to be, that the only thing that would hold me back would be a lack of talent, a lack of work ethic, or just plain old bad luck, but that it would have nothing to do with the household I was born into. While I was at Penn State, my math classes were just fascinating to me, especially when I started working on new and more advanced material. There was a rigor to mathematics that I loved. There was order, beauty, even clarity. There were proofs. I was uncovering the underlying structures of the world. I know that might sound, you know, a little, a little extreme, but it's true, this is what mathematics really does. It's the universal language of our world. I started checking math books out of the library to go beyond what I was learning in class. Once I started doing mathematical research and discovered the deep satisfaction of doing original work, I became convinced I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. I was hooked. And I'll level with you at first, it wasn't easy to convince the football team that I could take graduate level math classes. Let's be honest, college football is like a full-time job. And at first, it wasn't easy to convince the math part department that I could do this work while being on the football team. And that I could take some classes without having the prerequisites. There were a lot of special permission forms in my career. But I knew deep down that that was what I wanted to do, and I would not be dissuaded. I understood my priorities, and I used my time carefully. I loved it, the football and the math. These two parts of my life rarely intersected. I was extremely good at compartmentalizing when I was playing. But they both made sense to me, and my friends, my coaches, and my professors came to not only accept it, but to support me. My teammates would you know, give me a little bit of a hard time if I'm reading a math paper on the bus. And my math friends were a little confused by the whole football thing. <laughs> but those who knew me knew that I was serious, and they realized that that was the right path for me. I had professors, too, who saw something in me and gave me opportunities. They gave me encouragement and the honest feedback I needed. I had football coaches who believed truly that I could be great. I had friends who were like brothers who supported me through hard times. At Penn State, my teammates and I, we were just playing for each other. Not everyone I now know has that type of luck. 
Not everyone can see the possible futures that are open to them. Maybe they look around and they don't see people that they can relate to, that have shared experiences. Maybe they haven't been given the same opportunities as others. Or maybe they try something and fail at it and give up, not realizing that setbacks and adversity can give you the best chance to grow. I wrote this book in part because I wanted to give people an example of someone who hasn't followed a single traditional path. I wanted to show that you don't have to look a certain way to do a certain thing. I wanted to show that my failures have been as important a part of my story as my successes. And I wanted to tell people about why I love math and why I think it's just so important for everyone. It is, quite simply, learning how to think. Thank you. <laughs>